Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Press Play Lifestyle Inspired Podcast, where we do interviews with interesting and inspiring people like our new friend here, Kylie. And we do this for our listeners to help them find the resources, tools, and support they need to be their best inspired self. How are you doing today, my new friend? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm great. It is sunny in Wisconsin, which is like never the case. So. <laughs> right. I'm having a fabulous day and I got my hairs did. So I'm feeling all good. I'm like, it's been a minute. I had um, glitter in my hair. That was <laughs> some gray glitter happening. So I had to, had to get a, get my roots done. So I'm happy to, I'm happy about that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's like, woo-hoo. yeah. How about you? What's the, are you, are you right. in Southern Cal? Is that where I see? Yes. You? I'm in Southern. Yes. Yeah, is everything still, you guys are still pretty buttoned up, aren't you? Um, you know, it's it's weird right now. It's like we're starting to open up, but people are still wanting to stay in. I know I haven't gone out really, like, at all in months. So I am I want to get back out there, but at the same time, you know, it's kind of weird right now. Um, yeah, just trying to figure so the vibe it's, out. It's um, but I would still wear a mask just in case, because yeah. you never know. Yeah, that's good. It's that's getting good. there. Still weird though. Getting there. We're oh. still opening up. Well, so since we're everyone in the universe is talking about those types of topics, we're not going to today. We're going to talk about you. So would you just mind taking a yes. moment to just tell the audience a little bit about yourself and um and a little bit about your music, if you don't mind? Yeah. So I'm 17 years old. I'm from Southern California. Um, I've been singing country music ever since. I was little. <laughs> I remember, you know, my grandma always tells me stories where I was little and I couldn't even walk yet. And I was just like kicking my legs, dancing to like Martina McBride. Like she was one of my favorites when I was little. Um, so yeah, I grew up with my grandparents for the first eight years of my life. Um, my mom was abusive. So my dad got full custody of me and he was a single working parent. So um, he was out working. I was living with my grandparents and um, he was living there too. And then when I was eight, I moved in with my dad and my stepmom. Um, and I have two little sisters. They're my best friends. Love them. Um, but yeah, growing up with that situation without my mom, it was, it was very hard for me. So music was kind of my saving grace. And um, it's honestly, it's what got me through. And Kelly Pickler was a big inspiration for me when I was little. She had a song out called I Wonder. And it was about her mom and how she wasn't in her life and how she just like wonders if she thinks about her. And I was like, wow, like there's other people out there going through the same thing um, that I'm going through, you know? So that's what drew me to songwriting and music because I wanted to get my story out there and um, help other people. So yeah, it's just music is such a full circle thing because it reminds me that you're not alone. So that's what I love about music, and that's what, that's why I want to do it. And so I'm doing it. I've been singing country music um, for forever, and I love it. Absolutely love it. That's amazing. I love that. So I think one of the things we find that um, the things that we choose not to talk about are the things that keep happening, right? They, we don't talk about it. It keeps bringing it about. And so I think it's very brave to come out and have a story of, you know, a non-traditional childhood. And there's good parts of that and bad parts of that. And sure. um, hopefully that I'm sure has inspired some of your music, but it's probably also inspired other young women who maybe are afraid to talk about something or do feel alone. And right. they're, they're not maybe going to relate to me, but they'll be able to relate to you. You're a little closer to their, their age group or, you know, doing the same types of things they like to do. So I think that's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So 17, which you brought it up, so I get to ask about it, but um, <laughs> yeah. you say you've been always singing. So I, I suppose someone, I, I've been listening to your music in preparation for the interview. And if mm -hmm. someone's voice is beautiful as yours, I can't imagine you not always singing. Um, oh. when did, <laughs> you're welcome. But when, when did you start like singing where people other people were listening like you like right now I know you have a single potentially coming out there's, yes. there's a difference right between singing with mom and dad and everyone thinking you're amazing and then like fans so when did that happen yeah so that's actually that's a really funny story so when I was little I was probably like one of the top five shyest people 
you would ever meet. Like, I couldn't even, like, <laughs> I couldn't order my meal at, like, McDonald's. Like, it was just very bad. I was so shy. Um, I had, like, my, like, little group of, like, three friends, and, like, that was it. Like, I wouldn't talk to anybody. Um, but then, like, I'd always loved singing, right? But it was, I was still, like, nervous to even sing in front of my family. But I just remember we used to have, you know, like, how, like, we was really popular, the video yep. game. Thing. so I used to have like American Idol on our Wii and like me and my aunt like bless her heart but she is like terrible tone deaf like oh no <laughs> your poor <laughs> auntie she's like thanks a lot Kylie we appreciate you oh no she knows she's the best singer in the family you know so we used to do I have the tiger on um American Idol on our Wii and like that was like our song and like we would always sing it and we would always have like family competitions and um that like started to break me out of my shell a little bit and then I remember telling my grandma and my dad I was like I really want to go to singing lessons like and they're like what the heck like are you sure and I'm like yeah like I think I'm ready like I can do this so then they're like okay we'll see so then my grandma took me to <laughs> voice lessons and it was a it wasn't a private lesson there was like probably like three other girls in there and like they had their like moms in there and so I we walk up to like around the piano of the voice teacher and we had to like sing the scale and when it got to me where I had to sing it by myself in front of everybody I froze I looked at my grandma I started crying and I ran out of there I was like nope like this is not for me I cannot do this um so then I kind of went back in my shell a little bit and then in fourth grade um there was a talent show at school and I was like I'm gonna do this and everybody's like whoa whoa like, look what happened at voice lessons. Like, are you sure? And I'm like, no, yeah, I can do this. So me and my younger sister, she's a year younger than me, um, we auditioned for the talent show. And we did Never Ever Getting Back Together by Taylor Swift. And we had our own little, like, dance choreography. And, like, we sang it and everything. We had our props. I had, like, this old vintage phone. Like, it was hilarious. And so we made it. And I just remember going on the little stage at school. and. I didn't want to get off and then that was when I was like this is like this is what I want to do for the rest of my life you know I can't see myself doing anything else so when I was like nine or ten I went back to voice lessons um and yeah since then it's just led me to where I am today and I never stopped and never will so yeah that's amazing someone so young to have like find something that you're that passionate about and yeah. and for it to be like the opposite of what you might have thought, right? Being like a yeah. shy kid, like, oh, I'm going to go stand on stage, but I throw up when people say hi to me. So, like, mm -hmm. kind of like. And I feel like it's even more like, because when you're at school, like, you're so embarrassed. Of, like, those are people you see every day, like, all your friends and stuff. And so, like, I still can't believe, like, I just didn't care anymore. Like, I totally, like, went, like, flipped a switch. It was weird, but glad I did it. <laughs> yeah. So, being a younger artist, I mean, are there things that you think, are harder for you than maybe if someone were um, maybe like 25, like if they're, they start a little older, they're already past their 18th birthday. What do you think? Yeah, I, I for sure do, you know, um, talking to people in the industry, like there's two different kinds of people. There's the people that look at you and they're like, Oh, like you're 17, come back next year. Like you have a lot of time, like, you're too young, you know? And then there's the other people that are like, wow, you're 17, like, and you're doing all this stuff. Like, that's amazing. And, you know, those are the people that I love to be around. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> I get it. Like, as a 17 year old, I still have so much room to grow and mature. But I feel like, like, I've been told by everybody that, like, actually knows me, you know, like, they're like, you really haven't this old soul, like, we don't feel like you're 17. And I really appreciate that. Because, you know, growing up in the situation that I did, like, I did have to mature faster, um, emotionally, and it was just a different situation. I don't, I feel like I don't have the mindset of a regular 17 year old who just like, runs around, and, like, doesn't really care, and doesn't really have like a vision of where they want to be in the future. But with me, like, I have that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so what do you think so, is the advantages like of having, knowing your passion and, and knowing your gift before you're like 40, you know, I think some people can be 40. Some people never find their gift. 
Uh, is right. there any advantages to being younger? Yeah, for sure. You know, it's more time to hone in on your craft and um, perfect it. And it's more experience for you. Um, and I feel like it just gives you a longer, more of a chance of getting yourself out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I, I guess one of the things that I, I'm really curious of that would make me nervous for you as I'm a, I'm a mom of four. So I'm always like, I'm everybody's aunt Jackie. So I, mm-hmm. who is, is there anyone that's like helping you as a manager or like a business person, or is that something you're doing on your own? Yeah, I have a manager. Her name's Kimberly. She is amazing. I love her. She is, she is like more than a manager. She does. She goes out of her way above and beyond. Um, she's amazing. And my dad, you know, he also acts as like my dad is your, um, dad I wouldn't so cute. It. Yeah. So yeah. I have, I love my team. It's a great team. Um, core as well and burning ground. They're my development company and, um, you know, everybody just works together and it's just, I love, I love it. I love it. I wouldn't be where I am without any of them. It takes a whole village. <laughs> amazing. So mm-hmm. is there anything that has been like postponed for you or canceled? this last couple of months that you're kind of maybe bummed about or glad about a few things i'm I'm mostly bummed about i was supposed to open up for the marshall tucker band and i was so looking forward to that but that got postponed i believe um so that sucks totally sucks everything got canceled or postponed i don't even know like what got canceled or postponed like i don't know which it's just um, off until further notice huh so that really sucks. But um, I have my first show back out in the real world on Saturday. So I'm so excited. I literally like almost started crying when my manager called me. She was like, hey, Kylie, can you do the show? I'm like, yep. Don't care where it is. Whatever. Like, forever. I'm and- there. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So um, so that's good. So you have a manager and it sounds like, um, your dad sounds like a pretty amazing guy, like being a single dad and raising daughters. That's pretty amazing, huh? Yeah, he is. He's, you know, we butt heads a lot. We're both very, um, strong minded people. <laughs> you know, we see things differently sometimes, but, um, a hundred percent would not be where I am without him. I don't even have my driver's license yet. So he's like, I always say like, he's my Uber driver. He's like my dad. He's like my bodyguard. It's so funny too, because like all his friends, um, they all like come to my shows, and like they're all just like these like big guys that are like my bodyguards. It's hilarious, but it's amazing. Yeah, I love him. He's Aww. awesome. So, um, I I did listen to a few of your songs, but I also know you have a great Instagram page and some nice little pieces where you're singing and you're playing guitar. So, is the guitar your main instrument or do you play more than one or what's kind of your musical side look like? Yeah, so I actually like just started playing guitar. Like I started learning probably around a year ago. So, um, you know, with writing, songwriting and everything, it just makes it so much easier. Um, I've learned that. <laughs> so yeah, guitar. I play like a tiny bit of piano. Like if I really put my mind to it, I could, but I like guitar the best. Yeah. yeah. I like guitar. Um, mm-hmm. I, are you at the point yet where you can play guitar and sing? Or are you still working? Yeah. That? Yeah. Yes. I, I did not think I could do it. Like when I first started out, I was like, oh my gosh, how do people do this? Like, this is impossible. But I just like practice. Like my family hated me for it. I like stayed up to like three o'clock in the morning, like playing guitar and they're like, Kylie, shut up. <laughs> but that's <I> awesome. <laughs> um, I, my, um, I play accordion, which is loud and does oh, people yeah. fill up. And my daughter plays the flute and I, yeah, we thought that too. We're like, Nan, you know, that's enough, Nan. Like seriously. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome though. <laughs> but but yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. To, I think um, one of the things I found during, you know, kind of the, the quarantine-ish stuff going on is you know a lot of people keep have been keeping like god and music out of schools and i think it's so beautiful that with all of this going on like everyone's turning to music like right. the artists are online you know playing shows doing instagram little quick videos and like that's that shows to me how important music is right. not just it's not just, oh, that's nice, but it's like part of people's soul and what makes them. Music is healing. It really is. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. And 
how much do you think music had an impact on you kind of getting through some of the things with your, you know, your mom when you were younger and, and, you know, your dad's situation? Huge impact. Huge. Like, I always say, like, music was, like, my saving grace. Um, and I just want to be that saving grace for other people. You know, I, I wrote a song about my mom and that whole situation, and I was really scared to release it. I was, like, a couple days before, like, the actual release of it, I was talking to my dad, and I was like, Dad, like, I don't know if I can do this. It's like, this is a lot for me um, to be that vulnerable and put myself out there like that, you know? And he was just like, highly like, you need this to get out there. Like, you're going to help other people. And like, that just really spoke to me. And I was like, as long as I can just help one person out there relate to this. And, um, yeah, you know, that's so much that means so much to me. And I released it and, oh my gosh, like the reaction, I got people from like all over the world messaging me and saying how like this, like saved their life and this like helped them get through their situation and I feel like the whole you know like single parent thing or like not having one of your parents there it's so common nowadays um and not a lot of people like to bring it up or talk about it because that is a very like sore subject but you know I was just like I cried for a couple days because I was Mm -hmm. like this like means so much to me that it meant something to other people you know that's amazing very full circle moment yeah So are your, you see, you have two little sisters, right? Are they musically inclined? Um, no. No, (laughs) I have my one stepsister. She's a year younger than me. She dances. And then I have um, my half sister. She's my stepmom and my dad's. And she's very talented in gymnastics. She's eight years old right now. She's insane like little six pack like it's crazy and I'm over here like I don't run like I don't do nothing you're after like you. uh, <laughs> uh, yeah I ain't doing that <laughs> yeah literally like my entire family has always played like sports like softball and baseball and like I came along and like they're like what happened to you and I'm like I don't know I don't like hey, that I stuff. got music you guys go outside <laughs> yeah. and get dirty I got this <laughs> literally yeah. yeah so my dad's kind of bummed because he's like super like baseball fanatic um and then he got three girls um singing dancing and gymnastics so he didn't get what he wanted but whatever yeah so yeah dad's not dressing up in the tutu though right yeah yeah oh no heck no (laughs) he would never (laughs) like uh no not happening so um so are you are you almost out of high school or are you already out i will be a senior this next year yeah yeah oh well good so you didn't miss prom (laughs) Hopefully yeah, you get hopefully, to go to prom. Yeah, hopefully. I don't know what this next year is going to be like. Yeah. Do you do a lot of traveling um, with your with your work? Yeah. Um, I go to Nashville a lot. And I'm so sad because I haven't been there in forever, it feels like. I went, last time I went was in February. Um, that was really cool. I was there for country radio seminar. And it was also like landed on my birthday. So I oh. turned 17 out there. So that was really cool. Very, very cool. So, um. Mm-hmm. Do you have a lot of people that support you in terms of like, you know, or do you do all your own writing or do other people write songs for you? Like, what does your team kind of look like? Yeah, so I always co-write my stuff. Um, I have a couple songs out that um, I wrote by myself. Um, But yeah, I love co-writing with people. I work a lot with my good friend, Jason Hamer. Um, Me and him write all the time. Um, That's where most of my release stuff is from um so that's super cool he's awesome and lately I've been writing with more people out in Nashville because it's so much easier right now to reach out to people because everybody just really wants to help each other you know um but yeah lots of did you did you find that was that way in the music industry before kind of the quarantine-esque or um because I think people have fantasies of what what it is like to be a, a working singer versus like you're not like, okay, so I'm super dating myself, but like, you're not Reba McIntyre yet, right? You're not, you know, Patsy Cline or Dolly Parton or Shania Twain or Dixie Chicks. So like, there's got to be a difference between like that level of length and longevity as an artist and where you are. Um, So kind of what's the team look like when you're kind of a younger artist, like starting out artist? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there is so much um, that goes into everything behind the scenes that nobody sees, like, I remember, like, 
I've learned so much, like, just, like, within a span of a year that's, like, boggles my mind, like, with the whole, like, recording process and the whole, like, writing process and everything, you know, it's, like I said before, like, it takes a village to get everything done, um, but it's super, I think it's so fun, like, I really right. do, like, I really enjoy, um, the whole, the whole shebang, you know, with writing, I love writing, learning guitar I'm obsessed with that now singing of course always been a passion of mine and my manager like I said she's amazing um doing shows so fun um my band they're insane um going into the studio recording like studio musicians they are absolutely insane like it's crazy the people behind the instruments and the recorded stuff and um producers and just everybody together it's just so cool I love meeting people in the industry because you need it takes all kinds of kinds you know yeah so it's just, I think that's amazing right that you're just kind of like there's this whole village of people and mm -hmm. people see you and they're like oh look Kylie's amazing and you're like yeah and there's like 8,500 other people behind me literally. That amazing yeah literally cool. so what's what's next like um, for someone who's accomplished as much as you have already, um, you're super, you know, you're fortunate that you're there. Is, do you, what do you look forward to? Like, I think you have what some people might have already been their dream. So what are you looking for next? You know, what's, what's next for Kylie? Yeah, well, I always say, you know, like, I want to keep writing and I want to keep putting out music that people can relate with. And as long as I touch one person um, with my music, then that's all I need, you know? But there's obviously, like, bigger goals for me as well. Like, performing at the Grand Ole Opry always been that would a be amazing for me. Yes. And stage coach. Um, you know, all that stuff I have to work towards and um, look forward to. And I plan on getting there one day. So, <laughs> yeah. That's you know? awesome. It must yeah. be expensive to, like, travel, though, all the way from California to Nashville all the time. Yeah. So yeah. So how do you, how do you, um, fund your, you know, mini little enterprise? Is it from your music proceeds or? You um, know? Yeah, everything is self-funded right now. Um, so then hopefully I get signed and yeah. that will be taken care of, you know? <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. So it'll all be yeah. worth it. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Was there anything else you'd like to share with the audience or, um, I'm going to make sure in the show notes we'll have your Instagram and your Facebook and mm -hmm. all, you know, all of your, your website, which has got, if anyone's listening, great little clips on there. There's some really good music on your Instagram. You've got a lot of stuff out there if people are interested. Mm -hmm. um, but is there a specific place you really think you'd like to you know, navigate people to so they can learn more about you? Yeah, probably I would say, you know, Instagram and Spotify. Those are my top two. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to meet with us. I bet our listeners are going to be super excited. I really do hope they listen to you. I, I'm not, you know, I don't have any reason to tell you you're great for no reason at all, but I, I really, you have this really rich, like soulful voice. I think people will be surprised if they hear your music and then see that you're very, you're as young as you are. Cause you've mm -hmm. got, you've got like this deep, rich, vocals with a little bit of country twang thrown in for fun which yeah. is good <laughs> yeah thank you so much yeah well we, we look forward to keeping an eye out for you and as you know new things come up you know hopefully your your PR firm will let us know but we yeah. will definitely share your information with everyone and thanks again awesome thank you so much you're welcome bye-bye all right bye